Fedora 30 was just released. Today I'm going to take a look at Fedora 30, their workstation edition featuring the GNOME desktop environment. Fedora 30 will feature the GNOME 3.32 desktop environment, the same version of GNOME that the recently released Ubuntu 1904 Disco Dingo also shipped with. We may do, do some comparisons between Fedora and Ubuntu. Today's video will be a quick installation and first impression. I'm going to take a look at Fedora 30 inside a VM. Let's get started. So let's take a quick look at the release announcement for Fedora 30. So reading fedoramagazine.org, Matthew Miller posted the release announcement on April 29th. It seems it was just about six months ago that we announced Fedora 29 and here we are again. So basically a six month release cycle. I actually installed Fedora 29. I have it on one of my drives on my main production machine and I really liked Fedora 29. Although that particular version of Fedora 29 was a uh, Fedora Jam edition that featured the KDE desktop and was kind of meant for multimedia production but the same underlying core technology is there. It was basically Fedora 29 just with Plasma and some multimedia applications installed by default. Today of course I'm going to look at the stock Fedora 30 workstation edition. Uh, some of the changes featured are of course the brand new GNOME 3.32 which is the latest of that particular desktop environment. Uh, saw some enhancements, some improvements. Uh, Fedora also worked on a little bit on theming. I think they polished their icon set up a little bit. Also, you're going to get the latest GCC9, Bash 5.0, PHP 7.3, among other updated packages. Just quickly taking a look at the release announcement for GNOME 3.32, since the desktop environment is, of course, the big feature. With the Workstation Edition is Fractional Scaling was a new feature added in GNOME 3.32. Also the File Manager, although technically not part of the File Manager, there is now an extension that gets you desktop icons, it, for those of you that prefer icons on your desktop. That was all handled by the Nautilus File Manager and the GNOME devs ripped that out of the file manager but that now there is a GNOME extension that will place icons back on your desktop so I think that's a great thing uh, they played around with the settings menu a little bit and of course GNOME boxes has seen some improvement especially when it, in regards to 3D acceleration for your VMs 3D acceleration is actually very important most operating systems you want to enable 3D acceleration in your VM your hypervisor otherwise the performance is going to be rather poor your OS may actually not run at all if you don't have 3D acceleration enabled and of course some improvements with the GNOME Software Center so again today I'm gonna fire this up I'm gonna take a look at Fedora 30 inside a VM I'm gonna install this inside VirtualBox today alright so I gave this VM 4 gigs of RAM also gave this VM two threads of my 24 thread Threadripper CPU uh, should be more than enough really for a VM so I'm going to go ahead and start Fedora Workstation Live here at the boot menu alright and it's checking I don't know what it's checking but it's checking and we get a little counter or, or percentage that ticks up alright it logs us straight into the live environment and of course the install screen comes up welcome to Fedora do we want to try Fedora which basically closes this window and we can play around in the live desktop environment I don't want to do that for one thing the live desktop environment here the screen resolution is very small 800 by 600 pixels uh, I, I want to actually install this thing and then be able to blow up the desktop to a, a more reasonable size to take a look at it so I'm gonna go ahead and run through the installation Besides, I want to check out the installer. Uh, the Fedora installer has always been one of my least favorite installers, to be honest. I like the Ubiquiti installer that Ubuntu and most of its flavors use. I like the Calamaris installer that a lot of distros use, such as Manjaro being one of the more popular ones. So, welcome to Fedora. Fedora, what language would you like to use? I wish I could see the languages. I'm hoping English is the default because there's nothing in the menu here in the VM. I'm just going to click continue and hope that English was selected. Uh, looks like it did select US for keyboard English US. Yeah, time and date America Chicago is the correct time zone. I am in the central time zone. Installation destination automatic partitioning has been selected. I didn't select automatic partitioning. How did it get that? I'm not sure where it even got that installation destination okay but I don't see it, it, this is gonna be a problem with the VM I'm assuming uh, 
I'm assuming there's supposed to be stuff in the window here and I can't actually see it. I'm just going to click done and hope that the automatic partitioning and everything kind of makes sense. Sometimes in these VMs, the automatic partitioning does not make sense. Like it'll create a massively large swap partition, which in a VM is kind of wasted. Uh, as a matter of fact, it, it could be such a big swap that there's so little left for the actual operating system to install to that the VM may not even work. We'll see. We're, we're, I don't know where I go from here. So localization, time and date, installation, destination, all looks good. I guess I just need to click begin installation. This is really bad. I'm surprised how bad the installer looks here in VirtualBox. Fedora is such a large Linux distribution. It's such a popular Linux distribution. Maybe the second most popular Linux distribution on the desktop. I'm just throwing that out there. Uh, distro watch numbers don't mean anything, by the way. But we know Ubuntu probably has by far the most installs out there as far as a Linux desktop operating system. Fedora is very popular as well. I'm just surprised nobody has checked how bad the installer looks inside VirtualBox. Because I'm, I'm sure people have installed it and said, hey man, this doesn't look good. All right, the installation has completed. That installation time was very fast, uh, less than 10 minutes, maybe as little as five minutes. I actually wasn't timing it, but very fast on my current equipment. It says complete, Fedora is now successfully installed and ready to use, go ahead and reboot and start using it. So anytime you install a new operating system, of course you always have to reboot the machine. Uh, so I guess I just need to click quit and does it automatically reboot? It does not. I guess I have to reboot the system myself. I kind of wish their installer had the option to automatically reboot when you're you're done, you know, you or have a button you just click and it reboots because that's what 95% of most people when that installer is done, that's what they're going to want to do is immediately reboot. It, it doesn't make sense for me to have to close out the installer and then go find the reboot uh, button here at the top in the uh, logout session. Anyway, so we have a greeter here. Um, let me go ahead and go through this. So I click next and of course we're going to get some privacy stuff. Do I want to turn on location services? It's already turned on by default. Automatic problem reporting is also automatically turned on by default. Me personally, I might turn off some of that, but for purposes of this video, I'm just going to leave it on. Connect your online accounts. We have the options to connect to our Google account, Nextcloud, Microsoft, Facebook. Uh, I don't use any of that stuff. Of course, I have a Nextcloud account, but I'm not going to bother setting that up in this VM. About you. We need a few details to complete setup. So we need to give our name. I'm going to DT for my real name and DT for the username for the computer. And that is basically, I think, all we need to do other than, of course, the password. So we need to create a strong and complicated password for the DT user. This is a weak password. Try to add more letters, numbers, and punctuation. No. I want my password. Okay, it's going to let me use it. Start using Fedora. Okay. Now, let's see if we can take care of this screen resolution problem here. So after creating our DT user and the password for the DT user, I went ahead and rebooted the machine. So let's go ahead and see if I can get a proper screen resolution now. Now at the GNOME Display Manager here, when you log in, you have this little cog wheel here. And you see you have the option of logging in, logging into GNOME, GNOME Classic, and GNOME on Xorg. The default GNOME session uses Wayland as the display server. Because that's the default, that's the one I'm going to log in as. If for some reason using Wayland doesn't seem to want to work right in the VM, I'll log back out and check out the Xorg session here. All right, so let's see if I can get a proper screen resolution. Does Control Alt T bring up a terminal? No, that key binding is not set in Fedora, unfortunately. So many other distros have that set as a key binding. I just wish it was set in Fedora. They probably have some other key binding set to bring up the terminal. I just don't know what it is. All right, running XR and R, of course, to fix the display does not work because, of course, XR and R, duh, is for Xorg. I actually don't know how to change the screen resolution with Wayland via the command line. I wonder if I could go to a like a display setting and do it in a GUI. I don't know. Let's see. Resolution. Yes, it does have the options to change the resolution. I'm on a monitor for uh, my resolution. It's 1920 by 1080. That is not an option, but we could do 1680 by 1050. All right. Keep changes. Yeah, I like it. 
Yeah, that's not bad. Way to go, Wayland. You get that right. <laughs> so let me close this out. First impressions. What do I think as far as the wallpaper, the theming? Uh, the wallpaper, I gotta be honest, is, isn't the greatest. It's not horrible. The theming, it's just your standard black panel at the top. You know, that standard GNOME shell panel. Let's see what kind of icon set we got. Because they mentioned they had an improved icon set. They're working on that, that standard Fedora icon set. And it actually does look pretty nice. The icon set is not bad. Let's open up the file manager. All right, so it's the same hideous brown directory icons. Uh, actually, it's not the same. It does look like they've tweaked them a little bit. Uh, still not the greatest, but hey, it is what it is. Let's see what is installed by default here on Fedora 30 Workstation. All right, so we have GNOME boxes. Now, they mentioned that GNOME boxes did see some uh, improvements. Probably nothing you're going to notice as far as just opening up the, the program. Uh, all of it is like some of the back end stuff. In particular, it mentioned that GNOME Boxes does a better job of recognizing operating systems that need 3D uh, virtualization, 3D acceleration, and it automatically enables that on those operating systems. So that is a great thing, actually. GNOME Boxes, this is version 3.32. I actually have not played with GNOME Boxes much myself. I, I've played around with it once or twice, just happened to have a couple of GNOME distros installed on uh, physical hardware of mine, but I don't typically live in GNOME, so I never really get to play with GNOME boxes. Although I guess I don't have to have GNOME installed to use GNOME boxes, but if I'm not in GNOME, I'm probably just going to use VirtualBox. It's what I've used for years anyway, and VirtualBox just works. We have the GNOME calendar. We have cheese for a webcam out. We have the GNOME clocks utility, which is pretty nice actually. You can set an alarm, you set your, your stopwatch, set a timer. Nice little clock app. Uh, you know, it just does a couple of things, but it does it well. Also, what do we have? We have the contacts, of course, the file manager. We've already taken a look at Firefox. The latest version of Firefox is version 66. Let's see. I'm sure that's probably what they're on. Fedora is kind of a bleeding edge distribution, meaning typically it ships with the absolute latest software that was available at the time of its release. So Firefox, you have version 66.0.2. And how do I close this window? There's no close button. Okay, so that was a little graphical glitch there. The window decorations for that screen. Let me open that again. If I go back to help and about Firefox, you don't have the window decorations. Luckily, you can kind of tell where it's supposed to be because you get this highlight effect. Anyway, we have the LibreOffice suite installed. We have Calc, Draw, Impress, and Writer, and this should be the latest LibreOffice. Let's see what version they are on. We go to about LibreOffice. This was LibreOffice Writer, the word uh, processing application. Version 6.2.2.2 is the latest version. Same version of Firefox and the same version of LibreOffice as what Ubuntu 19.04 was using when it released uh, just a couple of weeks ago. Also, we have GNOME Maps. The GNOME Map utility is also a really neat utility. I don't know how many people really need a map program, especially on a desktop or a laptop. You know, maps typically more mobile operating systems you think you need it on your smart device your tablet your phone but you know what it's kind of neat if i zoom in with the scroll wheel on my mouse you can see i can scroll in forever actually i can actually scroll in maybe too much or maybe i'm just in the middle of nowhere i'm not exactly sure i'm scrolling back out but anyway it's a really neat utility i can scroll all the way in you know down to like city and street level also under the application menu here, we have Photos, GNOME Photos, which is the photo manager, Rhythm Box, which is our audio player. It's a really fantastic, actually, music player. Rhythm Box is very fine. We also have the GNOME settings, which we really should take a look at because their release notes did mention some improvements with this. So if I click the back arrow here to back all the way out to the main settings menu here, you know, we have options for Bluetooth, background notifications, search, etc. You know, all your standard control manager kind of stuff. If I go to backgrounds. Let's see if I can change to maybe a better wallpaper. I'm not really a fan of that default wallpaper, but Fedora usually ships with some pretty attractive wallpapers and that is the case uh, some of these wallpapers I think I saw back in Fedora 29 some of them I may have even seen back in Fedora 28 but they're really nice wallpapers actually yeah I think it's the same wallpaper pack I think I've seen all these before I know I've seen that one before uh, for sure that one was in Fedora 29 let's try this wallpaper 
Yeah, that's not bad. All right, also under the settings, we have options for notifications. So we can set up, you know, what kind of pop-ups, notification pop-ups we get for things involving like the archive manager, the clock, um, date and time, desktop sharing, files, power, printers, etc. Rhythm box, of course. This is really neat too because it, sometimes you don't want desktop notifications to come up because like I record videos and if I'm recording my desktop I don't want pop-ups coming on the screen while I'm recording my desktop which is typically what I'm recording. So you, you can go in here and tell the GNOME Software Center for example, hey do not give me notifications just turn all the pop-ups off. The same thing with Rhythmbox, you know, what, whatever program is the offender. We have our online accounts tab here where, again, we can connect to Google, Nextcloud, Facebook, Microsoft. But we also have a few other options than what we had during the install. We have uh, options to connect to Flickr, Foursquare, and Microsoft Exchange. We have some privacy settings here. This is where you can set your screen lock and, and figure out whether you want your camera and microphone on or not. So... Uh, sometimes I, I know a lot of people for privacy reasons love to put like a tape piece of tape or something piece of paper over their webcam when they're not using it because they're think, thinking the government or whoever some nefarious agency might be spying on you. This will kill power <laughs> to your webcam, but honestly, it, it would still be plugged into your computer. If I was that worried, I probably would just unplug it. Same thing with the microphone. Um, the microphone is probably the best way to spy on somebody so if you're really one of those kind of privacy nuts when the microphone is not in use I would just unplug it from the computer and I wouldn't rely on this uh, again if I was that kind of person I'm not I just leave everything plugged in if I go down here to devices of course we have the display that we've seen already but you also have the option here for if I go down to nightlight it is currently turned off, but I can set it to a couple of different modes. Sunrise to sunset, manual, or just have it off. You can adjust the temperature. So the night light makes the screen color warmer. So this kind of prevents eye strain, and it actually improves your health, improves your sleep patterns, uh, because it's, it's easier on the eyes, those of us that work on computers for hours at a time, especially. We should check out the GNOME Software Center, because most people probably will want to use the graphical software center so oh, I don't know why I'm ty typing GNOME I should just type software yeah and that is the first application that comes up let's go shopping so uh, you guys have probably seen the GNOME software center before so I won't spend too much time on it but you can search by category uh, of course you've got editor picks recent releases you know popular apps to choose from do we want to enable third-party repositories now you guys have heard me say this many times on Ubuntu installs. You really need to enable the third-party repos and all that to get a proper desktop experience. Same thing here in Fedora. So definitely install that. I think that turns on uh, the flat packs too here in the GNOME Software Center. So now if I search for something and it's available as a flat pack, for example, I should be able to get it. Let me search for a piece of non-free software and see if that is the case. For example... Discord, I know, has a flat pack. Discord is not free and open source software. Nope. Well, let's see what repositories we actually have. So if I go to the menu here and choose software repositories, let's see what's turned on. So third party repositories. Yeah, I mean, we enabled it, but nothing is really enabled by default. I can tell you, as a NVIDIA user, you need to have RPM Fusion installed. RPM Fusion, that particular repository will give you the proprietary NVIDIA drivers. It's going to give you NVENC, those of you that need NVENC for FFmpeg and OBS recording. Uh, as a former NVIDIA user, I can tell you Fedora was always one of the best distributions for an NVIDIA user that makes video content because it does have the ability to get NVENC installed and working very easily. Uh, let me open up the web browser. So I'm going to open up Firefox. So I'm going to search for Fedora. Flat pack software center. How do we get flat packs in the software center? Install flat hub apps on Fedora. That's what I want. All right, how do we do that? We have to install the flat hub repo. Okay, how do I get that repo? There is a link to their repository file. Okay, so if I click that, all right, do I need to save the file? Let's see. Download and open with software install. Okay, so I just need to click OK here. And obviously we need to install that. We need to give it root permission. And that should add the Flatpak repository.
the flat hub repository that is uh, obviously the flat pack has multiple repositories available it's a little different than snap which snap just has the one central repository and it actually makes snap a little bit easier to use actually i kind of wish flat pack had went that route and just everything's on flat hub flat hub is it <laughs> but they did not so let me close that out if i go back to the software center now can I actually search for a flat pack? Again, I know Discord has a flat pack, so if I search for Discord, no application found. So I'm assuming that all I really need to do is just update the repos and you know we should be able to get our flat hub. Yeah, it, it's enabled. So just syncing the repos. Let me do a quick Discord again, because I know Discord's available. Yeah, and now it's showing up. And does peak show up? Peak also shows up. HTOP still does not show up in the software center. That's strange because it's free and open source software and it's in the standard repos. So that is some kind of glitch there. Let's boot into the Ubuntu 19.04 Disco Dingo VM that I created two weeks ago. I've still got that thing up. All right, I just wanted to do a quick comparison since I've got both VMs here. Both of them use, you know, the latest GNOME 3.32 desktop environment. Of course, they tweak them a little different, but I'm really concerned about RAM usage on Fedora in this this VM. So what I did is I logged into Ubuntu 1904 Disco Dingo and I logged in on the Wayland session, not the Xorg session, so it's the same display server and I just want to check out HTOP here in Ubuntu 1904 Disco Dingo using Wayland on a cold boot. 750 megs of RAM. That's pretty respectable. And I went ahead and rebooted Fedora. So again, it's cold boot, right? So that's way everything is the same. And let's open the terminal and fire up HTOP on a, on a cold boot. And let's see what is going on here. Yeah, 983 meg. I mean, that's right at a gig. One gig. We're not doing anything. One gig. Uh, that's ridiculous. Uh, other comparisons, just quickly comparing these desktop environments uh, here. The Ubuntu version of GNOME is so much cleaner, uh, prettier, easier to use too. Having the dock here, the fixed dock on the side, you guys see me struggling here <laughs> hitting the activities and searching for stuff on a vanilla GNOME here in Fedora 30. I hate it. I would have to install half a dozen extensions to use this thing personally. Again, that's just me. Uh, I know a lot of people love vanilla GNOME and if it's your thing, great. If it's not your thing though, if vanilla GNOME is very much not what you prefer as far as workflow and a paradigm, Fedora 30 is probably not what you want to be on. Uh, some things I can tell you that Fedora does get right uh, that Ubuntu currently does not. If you want NVENC, if you're an NVIDIA user, you use the proprietary drivers and you need NVENC for FFmpeg and OBS, you're not going to get that in Ubuntu. Ubuntu 18.04, their last LTS, had it. But since then, I guess Debian dropped NVENC. So Ubuntu does not have NVENC going on in 18.10 or 1904. So I, that, that's, that's a problem. Overall, what are my impressions of Fedora 30 workstation with the GNOME 3.32 desktop environment? I've got to say, just initially playing around with it for the last hour or so in a VM, I'm not sure I would want to run it, to be honest. I didn't like much about it at all. The installer was was bad. I've never liked that installer. It didn't want to even render like anything right in the VM. Like I couldn't even choose a language. Like if I needed to choose a language other than English, I don't know how I could have done it because the menu system was broken in the installer. Also automatic partitioning, it just chose it on its own. I, I don't know what disk it was going to write to in a VM. It didn't matter. Uh, hopefully on physical hardware, none of that would be a, uh, a, an issue, but I don't know that it would be. I'm also not a, the biggest fan of GNOME. You guys know that, but you know, different strokes for different folks just because I'm not a fan of GNOME. Many of you guys love it. I'm more of a minimalist. I don't like how much RAM the GNOME desktop environment in Fedora 30 takes because we're not seeing that kind of RAM usage in Ubuntu, which also uses GNOME 3.32, so I'm not sure what the problem is. I know the folks over at Canonical do kind of hack on GNOME a little bit to get it to perform a little better, but I'm not sure exactly what kind of magic those guys are doing that the Fedora team obviously isn't. 
This show was made possible by Ansem, Carlos, Chris, Douglas, Dylan, Leo, Rob, Robert, and Tony. They're the producers of the show, my highest tier patrons over on Patreon. Without those guys, this show would not be possible. Show is also brought to you by all those fine ladies and gentlemen. You guys see that list of names on the screen that help support my work over on Patreon. Again, without these guys, this show about Fedora 30 Workstation would not have been possible. If you'd like to support the channel, please consider doing so. You'll find me at DistroTube over on Patreon. Alright guys, peace. Thank you.